What is up, everybody, and welcome to the Mind, Body, and Pockets podcast, where we take lessons learned from people in the marching arts community to help you level up your life. I'm Eddie. And I'm Paula. And on this podcast, we're going to get to know the individuals who make up the marching arts community. They'll share their experiences in and out of the activity and the mental, physical, and financial lessons they've learned along the way. In today's episode, we sit down with the CEO of MindStrong Fitness, Rachel Fryman. Rachel was a professional trumpet player and band director for many years before transitioning over to the health and fitness world full-time. With more than 15 years of classroom instruction and certifications in personal training and sports nutrition, Rachel developed MindStrong Fitness with an inside-out approach, focusing on both the mental and physical sides to building healthy, sustainable habits. Rachel tells it like it is in this episode, busting some common myths surrounding diet and exercise. She also discusses her mindset behind health and fitness, proclaims her love for carbs, and so much more. Rachel's passion for teaching and helping others is clear, and we're excited for everyone to hear her story. So please help us in welcoming to the podcast, Miss Rachel Fryman. Rachel, what's up? Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the show. Pumped to be here, yeah. We're excited to have you. Yeah, so glad to have you. Heard so many stories, and s- just following your profiles, and just, just mm-hmm. like, this this is incredible, and I can't wait to dive deep into this journey. Yeah, audience it's is... It's a weird journey, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we like that around here. The audience yeah. is in for a treat, totally. for sure. For sure. Awesome. So let's yeah. just dive right in it, right from the very beginning. Cool. You're from New York City. I'm actually from New York City, too. I grew up in the South Bronx. What was that experience like, just growing up in the city? And how did you even end up in Florida? Yeah, it was it was nuts. I swore up and down. You know, it's one of those things when you're younger, you're like so set in your ways and you're like, I will never leave New York. Like, New York <laughs> is my home. Uh, I could never live anywhere besides the city. Um, and I loved it. Like, New York to me is still home. I was born in Queens. I lived in Manhattan for most of my life. And I started out as a musician, obviously, and thought that's two things I thought I would do forever, play music and, and live in New York City. Wow. No. Uh, no. <laughs> my awesome. life has taken a very different path. Right. Um, but yeah, I loved it. Like it, it's my roots. It's it's a huge part of who I am. It gave me my my drive and my work ethic and my love of adventure. It's just one of those things where once you're out of it, you look back and you're like, man, like <laughs> life does not have to be a grind like that, right? Mm, preach. Yeah, when, <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> when he first moved down, it took a couple of years, I think, before he started yeah. walking at the Florida pace. He was always like, bah, 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 at the like, New York why is speeding everyone... by. I'm like, I can't keep up with this. I'm like jogging. He's it's like, yep. what? I'm literally <laughs> strolling as slow as I can. I'm just trying to get to where I'm going. 100%. Yeah. For me, the turning point, I was in Italy once. And I'm like power walking through everyone and like, you know, the Italian lifestyle, the European lifestyle. Like I had to stop myself. I'm like, I'm on freaking vacation. Like I'm in Italy, slow down. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized like the New York mindset has to calm down a bit. Yes. So how did uh, music life start for you? How'd you get into music? How'd you pick up the trumpet? Let us know. Yeah, I started um, weird backstory. I started in fourth grade and I freaking hated it. Like I was that kid who never practiced, um, so many memories of my parents like walking into my room when I was supposed to be practicing and I was like playing video games or something and Mm -hmm. um in eighth grade our mutual friend Danny Lieberman came along and pulled my parents aside and was like listen like I don't know what he saw because I I sucked back then (laughs) (laughs) but he said like she could be really good if she put some time and effort into it and I was about to quit like my plan had been to quit the year before and my parents made a deal with me. They're like, we heard you're getting this new great director. Hang with it for one more year. If you still hate it, then you can quit. Which in retrospect, like that was a very my parents thing to do. Like there's mm-hmm. always, you know, there's terms around this before we oh, give right. up. Right. <laughs> right. But that's, that's good parenting though, Absolutely. you know. Right? It's a good move. I like, right. like negotiating with your kids. Um, yeah. And Lieberman came along and he, uh, he got me to start practicing a half hour a day. And, you know, that led to private lessons. I led to an hour a day and it just took off. I wound up going to Interlock and Arts Academy for high school, went to college, got a master's in music. Like that just became who I was and, and what I did. And starting from a place of like, 
<laughs> like just absolutely when can I get out of this it was such a turning point <laughs> wow, wow yeah cool. you know when you live that identity I am a musician for so long and you think this is what your career is going to be we've also both been there it's really hard to shake that identity and make a shift in some ways because you you feel like that's who I am oh yeah and if not Where who am I, I? Right. Yeah. who am right. I and what am I going to do Totally. Yeah. yeah. And the identity thing, like that's it, like that becomes a part of your identity. But mm -hmm. I think one of the cool things, and this is maybe this is just getting older, like the theme that comes in, it's the same with the New York thing is that when we look back, we wouldn't be in the place we're in if it hadn't been for that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like being a musician taught you to sit down and practice for three, four hours a day. Like it taught you to have that drive. It taught you about nerves and competition and healthy balance or mm -hmm. lack of healthy balance yeah. and these are all lessons that no matter what your future career looks like, you wouldn't be where you are without those skills. Definitely. And that, that states a case for any parent that's wondering, is music a good thing for my child to, to be in? And we all know the answer to that is yes. Oh, for, yeah. Absolutely. For, for those yeah. reasons and, and many more. Yeah, it's just oh, so, yeah. It's such a great team sport. And, and that's why I'm so excited that you're here, because there's so many people in our audience like us that are no longer really in the game, but have fantastic lives outside of this or trying something completely different mm -hmm. from music. And I think you're going to inspire so many to just keep, keep going. Yeah, that's awesome. I so hope so. Sad. Yeah. Like back when I was teaching, that was, I mean, my, if you ever sat in on a music class with me and my middle schoolers, it was like, 8% music <laughs> and 92% life skills. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. Like when parents would ask me about music, I'm like, forget the studies about brain development, which are all valid and fantastic. Right. But you want your kid to learn to like get over failure, you stick an instrument with their hand because they're going to fail over and over and over again. And they have to learn to just keep picking themselves up. And that that's one of the best skills you can have in life. And that starts from, from playing an instrument. <sighs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's gold. That's a really? clip yeah. for sure. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and to and to fail in front of others, uh, and yes. of, in front of their peers as well. I think that's such a yes. such a totally. you know it's humiliating at the time, but it really it builds a thick skin and it, it gets you used to that because that's what's going to go on in life. You know, you have to you have to experience some of those things. Yeah. You got to fail early in mm -hmm. order to actually get over that soon. <laughs> yeah. <Yes>. Yep. <laughs> or you just get a participation trophy and it's like <laughs> everyone gets a trophy right? yeah. Yeah, nowadays. but then you never experience failure you know right. and the sooner you yeah. can do that the faster you learn how to get yourself up i love that absolutely yeah and I, I see that all the time not to get ahead of the conversation but one of the biggest things um in business like starting a small business on your own one of the biggest challenges and you know the whole study about how like 98 percent of businesses fail and what i'm learning from doing this is they fail because it's so hard not to take things personally, right? Like you do this launch and in your head, you've just spent months building it up and it's the best thing that's you know ever happened to the planet. And it's like crickets and it feels awful. Like this is your heart and soul. This is your baby. You're making yourself vulnerable. And 98% of business is that it's, it's failure. It's not taking it personally. It's what's the lesson here and it's adjusting. Mm. And that's hard for anyone. But I feel like that that background in music, like even though I never saw myself go down this path, like the reason I can be like, okay, well, that was information. Like, where do we address from here? That comes from getting on stage and bombing or, you know, right. losing an audition or whatever else. Like, it's exactly like you said, it's that thick skin you develop. That's great. It's almost like you're sure. mining the gold from your experiences and kind of yeah, just throw totally. out the dirt. That's <laughs> and awesome. you're trying not to take it personally and cry while you're doing it. Yeah, that's the dirt. You just get rid of the dirt, but <laughs> yeah. take the nuggets and, and move yeah. on to the yeah. next thing. That's, that's great. Yeah, totally. So, so you went to Stoneman Douglas and then yeah. you went to college for jazz performance. Is that right? So I went to, to Douglas for two years. Then it was kind of a weird story. I thought I was auditioning for Interlock in summer program. Um, <laughs> And this, this is a longer story, but it turns out I was auditioning for the school, which my parents knew I did not know. Oh. They did another parenting hack. They knew yeah. that like, teenage Rachel would not want to leave her friends. Brilliant. <laughs> so they're like, here, just apply for a summer program. Um, I was applying to the school. <laughs> Whoopsie. Wow. <Yeah. laughs> so Note I'm like, that. that's weird. I got a letter that I was <laughs> granted into the school. Um, so I did my last two years at Interlochen Arts Academy for high school. And one of the best experiences of my life. It's like hippieville for teenagers. Yes, <laughs> thanks, parents. Yeah. That's awesome. Right? You just walk around with no shoes on and play music all day. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And then after that, did my my undergrad in, um, I did a double degree in jazz performance and music education, and then wow. went on to do my master's in jazz performance and went back to New York City and spent 
over 10 years as a freelance jazz musician, staying up till, you know, 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. and <laughs> living the jazz life and yeah. until I burned out and decided I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's yeah. like a whole life time ago. It almost feels like you're right? telling that story versus what you're doing now. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, night and day. Even going from that to teaching, like suddenly you're waking up at 4.30 in the morning to go be oh, around yeah. children all day. You're like, I used to go to bed at this time. <laughs> That's a totally different lifestyle. Oh, what a mindset totally, yeah. And you go from making your own schedule to being in this regimented life that seems like it just, the days are forever because we all know yeah. band director life just doesn't stop. Yeah, it's all you're, day, every You're day, teaching, you're giving weekends. lessons, you're doing stuff from home. I Parents, mean, it's just, calls. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Totally, totally different bag, but same schedule. Like both, day, both professions you're teaching 12 or you're doing 12 hour days, but mm-hmm. it's, it's like you said, it's 12 hour days on your terms versus 12 very structured days of like having a boss and all these things you're not used to as yes, a freelance position. For sure. Yeah. So for our listeners, um, Rachel and I met through music. So that's another cool thing. Glad that we got to become friends through this, but uh, she was brought in as like the ringer trumpet player for the jazz band that I was in in high school, oh, wow. Danny Lieberman. Um, and I remember him being like, you know, this girl's coming in and you better learn your scales because she's going to come in here and she's going to smoke all of you guys and, you know, she's going to be doing all these solos, you know, to get us to like. <laughs> Within the shape, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But um, no, it was awesome. And, and I really, you know, we didn't really have a trumpet player at my school at the time that was really a jazz soloist, a jazz person. It was more so very classical bass. And we played in jazz band, but you know, like Lieberman jazz band was just like show band and it was so much fun. And we played, yeah, all the Motown stuff and just funk and just good times. But, you know, when you came in, I was, that was my first example that I had of a, of a pretty much a peer level of, oh, Okay, so that's mm. there's a side of it like this. Okay, I gotta, I need to learn this. I need to step my game up. So that was that's that was cool. a really cool experience. Well, um, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and and that's such a such a great another great thing about just being in that environment. Like that was one of the things with Interlock, and I loved is like you go from very much the big fish in a small pond thing, right? Like mm. you mm-hmm. you think that you're at this level because that's what you see around you. And then you go to the next level and you're like, holy crap, like I am not where I thought I was. Yeah. And, and we all need that in every area of life, right? Whether it's music or business or whatever, that's how we level up is by getting our butt kicked a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's awesome. I, I love so, that because it seems like you, both of you actually, with what you just said, it's, it's like you're breaking into a new phase of your life and it just like opens up new options too at the same time where it's like, oh, that's possible, that's possible. Oh, even with the fitness thing, it opened up a whole new realm and you were like oh i could do that oh wait i could go around the country oh <laughs> totally. cool. yeah. yeah for the record that was totally lieberman like trying to hype you up because i don't think i was that far ahead of you at that point i think it was I just him, like doing his thing where he's like you he's, better, you he's better good at that up. he was good at that but uh no <laughs> we, awesome. we had some good times that we got to go to europe a couple times and, yeah. and play and I'm, I'm very grateful for those opportunities and 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 times um awesome. yeah but let's uh let's shift a little bit into the fitness so you know, you were not always this jacked. I mean, no. I, if you guys are not watching this on YouTube, I recommend popping on YouTube just to, to see the physical specimen that, that Rachel <laughs> is. Because, no, seriously, you're, you're amazing. And uh, I, know, I should have knocked out some push-ups before right? that. <laughs> Get ready for this. No, but, but seriously, uh, you weren't always in this kind of shape. So when did fitness really become a focus for you? And when did you kind of shift into putting more time in? Yeah, it happened super organically, totally unplanned. Um, I went through like a, a crazy few years of my life, like later in life, I didn't realize I was gay till I was 30, which most people like yeah, figure that out sooner. And for me being someone who's just very driven, very goal oriented, very like knew what I thought I was gonna do from the age of 13, it was, it was super unsettling. Like I felt super out of control. I felt like, how did I not know this sooner? Mm. And during that crazy transition, I just wanted something stable, like something that was like my thing that I knew every day I could go to when, you know, life felt out of control. So I had a friend who was big into the gym and I started going with her and I wasn't consistent. Like my nutrition was a mess. I would go hard for like three days and then not go back for two weeks. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. all the normal stuff. But I loved it because it was like this goal to work towards. And it had nothing to do with how my body looked. It was about, 
I want to try to lift heavier than I did the week before. Like it drove me nuts that she could lift more than I could. And she was smaller than I was. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, my comp- my competitive side came out. And over time, it just became such an organic process of like, you know, we are designed as human beings to, to go toward pleasure and go away from pain, right? So my brain started to associate like, wow, I feel good every time I do this, even if I feel sore, even if I don't feel like doing it that day, like, I know that when I'm done, I'm going to feel so accomplished. And I'm going to feel so good that it just kept me going back and going back. And, you know, this is something I talk about endlessly within my own Facebook groups and things like that is it wasn't this thing where I was like, I'm going to get in shape starting tomorrow. And I did this major life overhaul and suddenly everything felt like, no, I was a hot mess. I didn't know what I was doing. Like my nutrition was crap. My workouts were a joke. I was on again, off again. And then just over time, when we start to see and feel the results, it just becomes more and more stable and becomes a part of who you are. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's (laughs) awesome. And, uh, there's so much in there too, yeah. even the, the pleasure versus pain and, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know, that no pain, no gain kind of, that's what came to mind as soon as you said that. And it's what is pleasure, you know, what is the actual pleasing part of that? Yeah. You're feeling, phys- you're feeling physically sore, but the mental strength yeah. that you're gaining plus the long-term benefits that you're gaining it, are unmatched. That's where the yeah. pleasure comes in. That's great. Totally. That's, I mean, that's one of the biggest things. It's like when people, and now we're getting into a bigger <laughs> fitness conversation, but one of the biggest reasons people don't stick with this is because there's this false belief of like, okay, my diet starts Monday. Okay. My new life overhaul starts Monday. Mm -hmm. And it's never going to be like that. Right. It's never going to be, we think it's this, this linear path of like an airplane taking off and it's not, it's, it's this hot mess of ups and downs. And the biggest mindset we shift we can make is like, just do a little bit. And when you mess up tomorrow, which you might, then you get right back on. And then you mess up in two more days, you get right back on. But we, we get into this all in all out mindset of like, I have to, I have to, I have to. And anytime we tell ourselves I have to, or I should, or I need to, then we're creating more of that pain, more of that tension. And then we give up. Oh, there's a huge correlation to that in music too. Just yes. hundred percent. Like the performance anxiety side and mm-hmm. there's and the pressure you put on yourself. At, oh my God, yeah. yeah. And wow. being, having to perform. Oh uh, yeah. Practicing the mm-hmm. failure in that. Yes. There was a sign I'll never forget in the interlocking bathroom. Someone painted the sign that said, someone else is practicing while you're relieving yourself. Oh my, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, no pressure. <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> wow. But it's true. Like when you're in that music atmosphere, it's like there, there were people there that would practice eight hours a day. Like I thought the four hours I did was a lot. And there are people mm-hmm. doing eight hours and you just get in this mindset. And that that's a recipe for burnout. Not to say you can't do it and love it. But right. there's the difference between like curiosity of, I wonder what it would feel like to practice for eight hours. Like, I wonder if I want to do this today and not tomorrow, if that's okay, mm-hmm. versus I have to practice eight hours every day or I'm going to fail. Yeah. And if I don't, I suck or whatever right. are the things right. that come to mind. And then you yep. just kind of end up in this rabbit hole and it's hard to get back from. I, yeah. I, I know we've done that a few times. I'm like, all right, Monday is the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all about Monday. It all starts Monday. <laughs> Until we were like... Wait, why Monday? Why not today? Why not right now? Or what little bit can we do today to actually add on to our uphill battle? Exactly. And whether it's music or fitness or anything else, you know, one of the biggest hacks we can learn is to let momentum be our best friend because it's, it's that little step and your body wants to feel good. So you do that little step and it's going to go, Oh, that felt really good. What else can I do? What else can I do? Mm -hmm. Which is a big difference versus horse blinders on. I have to do this. Mm. Right. Right. There's another clip. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what the, well, let's let's talk about that. Like the, the the okay, what's the next thing? And is there another thing? Because then you started a company from this. My let's talk about yeah. that for a little bit. Mind Strong Fitness. What inspired you to start that in the first place, or and have the courage to actually pull through with it? Yeah. So I started my company when I was still teaching. I was teaching middle school band, um, working those twelve hour days, and I was going to the gym as I mentioned with my friend. And after a while of doing that, like you know, the physical differences started to show. And I'd have a lot of teachers say to me, I wish I could work out, but I don't know what to do, or I'm intimidated by the gym or, or whatever. Like I always mess it up with my nutrition. So it started as just like, Hey, I'm going to the gym anyway. Why don't you come with me? And every once in a while, I'd bring a different teacher friend with me. And it was unreal to me, like to go back to what we were talking about with teaching, how 92% of my class was like (laughs) life skills, not, you know, not me. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing that the friends that I was helping or the coworkers I was helping, 
what I would hear for them had nothing to do with what their body looked like. It was their feeling. They would come back and be like, I've noticed that I'm a better teacher this week because my energy is increased. Or like, I, I'm showing up as a different wife this week because I just feel better about myself. And still, like, it gives me goosebumps right now saying it. And to me, it's the same reason I taught kids. Like, it's not about the logistics of what you're doing. It's about the feeling behind it. And I was like, oh my God, especially in the health and fitness industry where there's so much BS and it's so confusing because everyone wants to sell you the newest quick fix fad thing. Mm. But there are hard and fast rules. Like nutrition is a skill that someone can teach you, but no one's teaching you that because they want to sell you something. So here are these women who are avoiding mirrors for 15 years because they feel like crap about themselves. And their lives are starting to transform within like three gym sessions. Like in three gym sessions, you're, you haven't lost any weight. Like not much has changed, yeah. but everything's changing internally because of how they're showing up. Yeah, it's their mindset. It's their energy. It's how they're viewing themselves. And for me, I was like, that's it. Like, this is what I want to do. Wow. <laughs> but I struggled for a while because I was like, the, you know, the world doesn't need another personal trainer. There, there are millions of them out there. But what there aren't millions of are people who are, actually teaching truth behind this, right? Like there are people who will tell you cut out carbs or people tell you do the shake system. It worked for my cousin, whatever. But there are very few people who are going to say, listen, nutrition is a skill and you don't need to pay $200 a month for the shake system. Invest in learning it once. Like give me eight weeks and I will teach you this and you're never going to need me again. And to most people, that's not smart business because you want to keep, you know, you want to hand them a fish each time they're hungry instead of teaching them to. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. To me, that's, that's a lack mindset. Like there are what 8 billion people in this world. Like if I can teach each of them once, we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Wow. Yeah, and that's such a great model for your business. Just long-term, how much more impact can you have of this person actually bringing you even more clients? Because it's like, I learned from this. It's a skill. Yeah. Skills are learned. Skills are developed over time, but it doesn't take literally five years with a personal tr I love that right. I love that and there's less on the hook you know or just like it feels less like a, a sale you know it's more like a relationship mm -hmm. it totally is and that's actually that's exactly what happens is that usually when clients work with me and they learn this skill it's not like all right see ya it's like they bring their friends and then they come hang out just because now they know this stuff and what happens when you know something you want to teach it right mm -hmm. so they still hang out in my Facebook groups to chime in and be like oh when I learned macro tracking like blah 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 and then you become like, you become a family, just like, you know, our, we had our band families, we have our little mind strong family. That's beautiful. beautiful. It's yeah. a community that, that you're building. And it's, it's totally. so cool to, to see that happen because you have such a passion for this and a passion for helping others and to be able to do that while helping them transform their bodies and their, their mindset is just that must be incredibly rewarding, knowing that you're making an impact like that. It is. It's, I mean, to me, like, this isn't work, you know, the whole thing about mm -hmm. as cheesy as that sounds, it, it's not like I freaking love this stuff. And whether I was getting paid to do it, or I, you know, when I started out, I wasn't getting paid to do it. Um, I love it. There's nothing better than hearing someone say, like, I have not felt this good, or I feel better now in my 50s than I did in my 20s. Like, you can't get better than that. <laughs> wow. And this is like, goals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. So yeah. what was the transition like for you or what was that moment when you said, all right, I want to do this full time. I'm not going to be a band director anymore. What was that transition like? And did you have, was there a hesitation there? Because that's a big leap to take. It was scary as hell. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's one of those things where if you picture yourself telling it to your best friend, it's like an easy decision, right? Like you've built this company, you're like, you'll be fine. I know you, I know your personality, just go do it. Anyone I talked to about it was like, yeah, you're so driven, just go do it, you'll be fine. But when you actually make the decision <laughs> to leave your, and I was teaching in California. So a paycheck in Cal, a teacher's paycheck in California is very different than a teacher's paycheck in Florida. Like I was making Preach. good money. I had a very easy job. It was on paper, stupid for me to leave. Because the hours that I was teaching, this was not the case in Florida. Florida, I worked 12 hour days. My pay was not great. But in California, my hours were short. My pay was great. It didn't make sense to leave. But it was an energetic thing. Like it was very difficult to give my heart and soul to my clients, my Facebook community and show up and then have to turn it off for the hours that I was at school. 
and just not feel distracted to want to like post in my, in my Facebook groups and all this. So I hit this point where I realized like, if I want to get my business to where I want it to be, I'm going to have to jump off the cliff. Like one of my favorite expressions is you, you jump off the cliff, you build your wings on the way down, which is so much easier said than done. <laughs> I learned. <laughs> um, so it was, it was super scary. It was so many conversations with my partner, Amanda, about like, for me, you know, we all have, you talk about going down the rabbit hole, which is a whole other conversation in health and fitness, but we all have our limiting beliefs, right? And for me, I was brought up in such a family where like your financial status equals your success. So giving up stability and jumping into an endeavor and starting from nothing, like knowing I'm not going to have a, a solid, steady income for a while was so freaking scary. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And I'm getting nervous just yeah. hearing it. Right? <laughs> and it's one of those things where like, when you think about it in the terms of like someone else, it's easy to be their cheerleader. And when you actually do it, it became so much bigger than business. Like I had to do serious internal work about my own beliefs about what does success mean, right? What does abundance mean? Mm. Um, and it, it was the best decision I ever made because there really is an energetic shift between putting your all into what you're passionate about and splitting up your time. And I don't think you can, I, I think there's a point where you have to jump. I, I don't think you should do it too early necessarily, but I think there comes a breaking point where like, it's the whole burn your boat thing when you get to the island. Like mm. it, I have no choice, but to make my business succeed now. So I'm going to do everything. Like I thought I was working hard before and now I'm going to work smarter because it, it, there's no other option. There's so many gems in there. <laughs> but it is scary. Holy crap. Was it, it was, I had no idea what it was going to feel like to, it's like, if you've ever done, um, I've never gone bungee jumping, but I've done like those Tarzan swings, oh. which are essentially that where when you watch from afar, it's like, oh, that looks awesome. And then you get to the point you actually have to step off and you're mm -hmm. like, you want me to just step off this ledge right now? Like, can yeah, you push no. me? Something? Yeah, <laughs> something. <laughs> no, you got to leap. You have to actually be the physical one yeah. to take the leap Ugh. and it's it's that step once you do it it's fine but it's that step off that you're just like could you just push me like someone forced me to do this yeah right. and it's funny because that's just mental right yeah it's all it? mental there was so much in there just even talking about what does abundance mean and the pain versus pleasure and mm -hmm. and it's funny how much you weren't talking about fitness because there's so much that correlates with the actual brain and your feelings and your how it impacts your approach to what you're actually doing. It's giving me like strength to just even know that it's possible, you know? Yeah. And, Cause it's scary. It's, it's super, super scary. Absolutely. And, and I'm guessing that's where the mind strong name came from that correlation between the mind and the body. They work together. So actually a yeah, mind strong fitness was originally called unleashed fitness. Mm. And this was uh, talking about failing a million times. I did everything. I had a website, I had business cards, I had t-shirts, I had shaker bottles. And then I found out the trademark was taken. <laughs> uh -oh. So yeah. And that was like the first month of starting a business. And then I wow. had to start all over. Um, but yeah, for, for me, a lot of mind shrunk, part of it is just the idea of education. Like I don't consider myself a personal trainer. I consider myself an educator. Like I will always be a teacher. The other part is so much of what I do has nothing to do with health and fitness. It has to do with these limiting beliefs we all have. So I work with these women who have just hit this point where they believe my whole family's overweight. So who am I kidding thinking it'll be any different? Or, you know, I, I lack willpower. That's a huge one. They're trying to do these diets that go against human nature and they're taking it to believe that something's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the work I do in my programs, it's not just the nutrition plan or the daily workouts that we actually do mindset tools. Like we do journaling about what's coming up for you as you do this, what story are you telling yourself? And we literally work to rewire your brain for like, no, like it wasn't me. It was the fact that I was trying to cut out carbs and that's not going to last for any human being. I don't care if you're a Navy SEAL, like that's not on me. That's on the system. Mm -hmm. oh, I, so, love, I love that. The combination of education and, uh, and this whole wiring our brain for empowering beliefs. Let's go down that rabbit hole a little bit because we've been we've, <laughs> Let's been, go. we've <laughs> been hinting at it, we've been peeking in there, <laughs> yeah. but we might as well <laughs> dive all the way in because well, what triggered that for me was when you said the the boats quote like if what is it? Burn um, the if, boats. Yeah, yeah, if you're trying to take the island, you got to burn the boats, and that takes that completely rewinds your mind. Of yeah. there's no way out, the boats are gone, and this island yeah. is ours. I don't care who's on here. 
I'm going to get it. Let's talk yeah. about the mindset that it takes to really pursue health and fitness. Yeah. The, the biggest thing, and this goes back to what we were talking about before, is when people say to me, if there's one piece of advice that you can give someone who's starting out, it is hands down, get out of the all in, all out mindset, which sounds like it's contradictory to the burn your boat thing, but it's not because what you're committing to is this is a lifestyle. Like get out of this idea of I'm either hundred percent on my diet or I've already messed it up. So let me go house, you know, a whole pizza. Mm -hmm. It's you had a slice of pizza. Awesome. Did it feel good? Like, did it align with your goals? If it didn't, then let's make another choice. Not on Monday, not next week, like right now, the next bite we take of something. And the biggest shift is understanding like I'm not on a diet. I'm not on this new health kick. It's not this life overhaul. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm dedicated. I've burned the boat of the old lifestyle. Like I will literally never diet again. So now I'm going to learn to do this in a way that's sustainable without these gimmicks and these fads. And I'm, I've burned the boat of all in, all out. So when I mess up, which we all will, it's just right back on. Like there's no more in, out, on, off. Uh, it's just clicking in my head because I, I immediately started thinking about when I used to smoke cigarettes and that was an identity shift for me. You know, it was, yeah. it was from, I'm a smoker to I'm, I don't, I, not that I don't smoke. It was, I am not a smoker. I do not do yeah. this. And that, that was my, you know, that was my Island, my new Island, you know, and I, I took that over and it was a whole nother, a whole nother shift when I stopped thinking about my identity being correlated to that or just like, I just eat unhealthy or like, or I'm trying to eat healthy, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it wasn't a, well, I'm on this diet. I have this prepackaged meal. It was, I just don't eat like that anymore. Now I eat like this and it's part of my identity. Totally. Yeah. There was, I don't know if this was like a meme or a coach I saw post. It was like, I am blank. And they say, whatever you fill in the blank is one of the most powerful things you can do. Because when we label our labels can be dangerous, but they can also be really good. Right. Like saying I'm not a smoker is very different than I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. right saying i'm a person who jumps from diet to diet like that that is a belief that you're holding about yourself as opposed to i'm committed to a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're never gonna eat junk food doesn't mean you're never gonna you know drink alcohol or anything unsustainable like that it means that when we do have those moments we get right back on and they're all part of a healthy lifestyle <sighs> that's yeah. huge i love that and it's I, I think one of the most detrimental things when you're trying to be healthier or you're trying to get into make a change is the guilt that can come with make a uh, quote unquote, making a mistake, slipping up. I, Oh, I ate the pizza. I ate the donuts and now I'm a terrible person and I'm never going to get there. And it's, it's all these horrible thoughts um, about yourself and you're talking yourself down. And I, I love that what, what you're talking to kind of eliminates that. All right. I ate this. Let's move on. Let's, it happened. It's a thing. And yeah, I, I just love that because it kind of almost eliminates that, that guiltiness. Yeah. It almost feels like you chipped a note while you were playing. <laughs> and it was like, oh, that happens. Yeah. Let me try yeah. my best to like not make it. miles thing where you chip the note and then you purposely do it like three uh -huh. more times. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> let's go with that analogy because there are times, and this is probably one of the most shocking things when, when I tell people this as a coach, where I'll encourage people to fit that in. Like one of the things I always tell people is if I, if I had to choose between a life of fitness and never eating a Krispy Kreme donut again, I'm going with the donut. I will never live a life that does not include this yes. Krispy Kreme. Yes. And I'll tell people, I encourage you to fit those foods in because what happens when we don't, when we put the horse blinders on and we say, I can't, I can't, I can't. That's what, that's when people say I've been good all week. And then I binge on the weekends. Well, of course you're binging because you just tried to live off restriction all week. So when you give yourself an inch, it turns into this huge explosion. Right. Whereas let's say Monday, you're craving a donut. You're like, ah, I don't know if I really want to fit that into my goals. Tuesday, it happens again. You're like, okay, like I really want this. I'm going to have it. Well, then when Saturday rolls around, it's just another day, right? It's not like you just went five days of, I can't, I can't, I can't. And then of course you're going to go crazy afterwards. So I'm, I'm a huge fan. It not only takes that guilt away, as you said, it just, it completely transforms your relationship with food. Like food just become, there's no good or bad. It's, this is more nutritious than this one. It's, I think of, of macro tracking is the way that I teach it. And <clears throat> I think of it as a, a budget. It's like spending your money each day mm. and it's all about choice. 
but it's never about, there's no guilt behind it. Cause it's like, oh yeah, I chose to spend some of my, my carbs and my fat today on a donut. Awesome. And then we don't do that cave binging cycle that we all know so well. I love that. That's so good. Yeah. I need to latch onto that. Right, we've, <laughs> we've fallen guilty or victim to some of that too. You know, I guess victim it's our doing, but, but you, you start comparing yourself to people online sometimes like, Oh, the rock has an awesome Sunday cheap meal. I'm going to do that too. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just do what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, come on, be serious and be real with yourself, you know, and, and shift your identity to that mindset. That's a game changer for me. Totally. And that was a long lesson to learn. Like when I started to go back to the conversation, when I started, like I was lifting heavy, I was, even when I got consistent with the gym, my nutrition was still complete crap. It, it, I just wasn't seeing results. It was so frustrating. I went like a solid year of being consistent in the gym and nothing was happening. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it, it's because nutrition is literally 90% of the game. And I was doing exactly what you just described. I would eat quote unquote clean five, five or six days a week. And then on the weekend, I would have an epic cheat meal. Like my second date with Amanda was a full pizza, a full thing of baked ziti, garlic knots, <laughs> and dessert for myself. It's a true story that our waitress was like eight months pregnant and said, I can't eat this much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's one of her favorite stories to tell. Yeah, and then I wondered, why aren't I seeing results? And it's like, it doesn't matter if you've been good all week. If you're eating that many calories on the weekend, and you, you're not fitting that into your plan, like you're not going to see results. Yeah, that's and like overdrafting on that money you're talking about, that macro well, bank. 100%. If you're trying to be stingy with your cash, so stingy all week that you go out on Saturday and a few drinks lead to dinner and dinner leads to the club and everything. And now mm -hmm. you've just undone, I, I don't like to use the word undone, but you know what I mean? Like you've gone over your budget yeah. and it's, it's simple math. Like if, with weight loss, it's calories in, calories out. And the way that we avoid getting to that point is by not doing the restriction thing all week long. I love how you correlate that to the to the money in the bank because I'm just thinking of basically the overdraft fees that come with it. Or sometimes <laughs> when you're in the red after you swipe and you're just like, uh oh, now, now let me go work out this other job and let me let me try to make yeah. up for the 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 weekend or let me get two cardio sessions in versus and it's like you just start bargaining with yourself. <sighs> yeah. it's, a, it's back in that rabbit hole. Wow, I totally. love that. And that's what, I mean, the way that I teach macro tracking, that's that's what it is. It's like you have your daily budget of what you're going to spend, and then it's all choice. Like if, if you want to eat that donut, you're going to spend a bunch of carbs and fat. Awesome. There's no guilt around that. It's just a choice you made, and then you'll be a little stingy with carbs and fat the rest of the day. But guess what? Tomorrow you get a new budget, so it's all good. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the clean day, slate. it's not. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And it's all choice. There's no foods that are off limits. There's nothing you can't eat. It's about how do you want to spend your budget each day? And you have to yeah. spend every day. Right. That's you the have thing to too. Spend. You have That's to. That's totally it. And that, talk about the guilt. You mentioned the guilt the other time. There are nights I'm literally standing over the sink, like eating peanut butter. And <laughs> Amanda will look at me and I'll be like, I have to hit my fat macros for the day. And that's what it is. Like I have to spend it. Right. Mm -hmm. And how much fun is that? Like talk about transforming your relationship with food. Like Pasta is not a treat or guilt. It's something that I, I have to eat to hit my carb macros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> game changer. Yeah. That's, <laughs> total game changer. That is so good. Uh, so besides the uh, I'll start Monday attitude, mm -hmm. like what else kind of holds people back when it comes to making a change or, or getting started in the whole health and fitness thing? And how can they kind of bust through that? Yeah, I think so. The other piece to the puzzle um, we've been talking a lot about nutrition, but when it comes to workouts, I'm, I'm going to continue with the money analogy. Like most women think that cardio is a necessary evil. Now, some people love cardio. And if you love cardio, do you boo boo? I hate cardio. <laughs> I haven't done cardio in years. <laughs> that New Yorker came out just now. Like, yeah. Do you boo boo? <laughs> I love that. Um, but women are, most women are intimidated by weights, right? Because the weight section is predominantly men making weird noises and you know, sweating and yeah, it's, <laughs> it's weird scary. and awkward <laughs> it's weird and awkward especially for a woman when when you're not sure what you're doing so and then they have this belief that well i don't know how to lose weight so i'll just spend an hour and a half on the treadmill even though i hate it so the analogy that i like to use to go back to our money thing is that cardio is like money in your checking account like it's great to have it's important but it's not doing anything for you. Like you have to actively be working to put money in your checking account. When you lift weights, we'll pretend that high interest savings account still exists. It's like a <laughs> high interest savings account because you could be sitting on the beach drinking a margarita and your money's working for you. So when you lift weights, 
the way our body is designed is that the more lean muscle mass you have, the faster your metabolism runs. So by building that lean muscle mass, you can be chilling out, not doing a workout and your body is still processing calories faster. So one of my goals within MindStrong is getting women comfortable with lifting weights because it's more bang for your buck. It doesn't mean never do cardio, but you have a choice. If you don't want to do cardio, you don't have to. We just adjust your nutrition. So to your point about how to start, it, it's all about momentum. It's all about starting small. Like right now, if weights scare you, literally pick one exercise. Like go on YouTube, Google uh, arm dumbbell exercise, like any words you can think of find one video and do it and then do it again tomorrow and then do it again the next day. And at some point you're, you're going to naturally be like, okay, I got the hang of it. Let me add another one to it. Like you don't have mm. to force that part because it's going to happen. Mm. And that's why, again, going back to this idea of a major life overhaul, like when I start talking to people, like in my Facebook group or wherever else, there's never this sales pitch of like, you should join my 12 week program because most people are not ready for my 12 week program. Like if you're not working out at all right now, mm -hmm. I don't think you should start working out four or five days a week and get on a nutrition plan and all this. I tell them the same thing, like go pick one. Here's my YouTube channel. Here's my, you know, whatever freebie, go pick an exercise and do it. Because I know that in three, four months when they've got that momentum, then I'll be the person they come back to and be like, cool, I did it. I'm ready. What can we do from here? But it always comes down to this letting momentum be your best friend idea. Mm. That's great. Because I think it can be intimidating, especially if oh, you're not oh, yeah. really into this and saying, hey, you need to work out five days a week and you need to stop eating most of the time all yeah. the crap that you're eating. <laughs> and by the way, you also need, it's just, a, it's a, it can be a lot for somebody who doesn't work out at all. So I love that you make that okay, because a lot of people don't. It's, you need to do it this way and that's how it's going to be. And if you don't like it, and that's when people tend to give up. Yeah. Often. Um, yeah. Just to uh, dive in a little bit, because you mentioned find a, a YouTube video. I just want to shout out your videos that you make, because I think they're so helpful. Um, they're on YouTube and Instagram. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So Rachel goes through two wrong ways to do an exercise. And then the third third video slide is the, the correct way, mm -hmm. which is super helpful. <sighs> Even if you do lift, maybe you don't you're not lifting correctly. So I, I think it's great for, for beginners, especially um, mm -hmm. to just check it out. I showed Eddie saw them and yeah, just I'm not a beginner, but I was scrolling through and mm -hmm. then I was just like, wait, that's wrong. Hold up. <laughs> and you yeah. swipe through and it's like, Oh, I, I had no yeah. idea because my focus wasn't on the right spot or, or the right formation or didn't realize I was doing something that was being yeah. done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Game changer. Yeah. Super oh. helpful. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. Those were very trial and error. When I started, Instagram took me a long time to like find my thing in. And I started getting messages like, hey, could you do more of those XX check videos? And I was like, oh, you guys like that? And now that's all I post. Mm -hmm. But what's been interesting about that is that I've had people that live in other countries message me and they'll say like in very broken English, like I don't speak English. So your videos have been really helpful. And I, I never would have thought about that. Wow. I had one guy... I forget where he was from, but it was the same gist. Like, he's like, I don't understand most fitness tutorials, but this is such a clear visual of what not to do. And I was like, what a cool social media world we live in. Yeah. That's right? awesome. But that came about, and this is like in my programs, when I do video tutorials, again, it came about by learning the hard way. Like when I started training, this is, this is a true story. When I started training and I went to the gym with my friend, her name's Dana, that I used to go to the gym with. Literally, the way that I learned was she would go first. I would take a, vid a picture of her. Then I would Google any description I could think of about what she was doing. So I'd be like bicep cable high. Cause she had like the pulley thing and it was high and it was biceps. And then that would show up high cable curls. I'm like, okay, that's what it's actually called. So then I would Google high cable curls and find a video of someone doing it. And I would do this mm. for every exercise. It took oh, forever. Wow. And I was always injured because watching a video of someone do it or just seeing an exercise name doesn't teach you correct form. Mm -hmm. So when I do videos for my programs, like Ignite is my 12 week program and I have exercises, it's not just like me silently doing biceps curls. It's me saying like, notice my elbows here, notice my arms aligned. And then to the, your point about the Instagram post, I'll say, here's some common mistakes people make. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is because we're intimidated by the gym, because we're new, we're looking around seeing what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. And we're like, wait a second, 
my my you know video I saw on YouTube looked like this, but they're doing that, so they must be right. And then we try to copy them, and it's not right, and mm-hmm. we get injured. So knowing the mistakes to watch out for can be just as important as knowing how to do it to get results and to avoid injury. Yeah, and that's that teacher in you. Oh, I'm 100. percent That's it. why I like. I don't consider mm-hmm. myself a trainer. Like I'm. I am a teacher who needs to be like clear and patient and organized. (laughs) That's not words I hear associated with personal trainer (laughs) uh, very often. It's true. Yeah, That's cool. And it's cool too, because I'm noticing how you found the gaps and filled them from what you wanted. You wanted to see the right example, get some great information. One, you didn't have a picture of someone doing it. You didn't know the name of it. And then you're just kind of adding on and filling in the gap for your audience so that they have the tools that you didn't have when you were going through it. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do they say? Like the the thing you struggle with the most is usually the thing you get most passionate about. Mm. And that's been so true. I, I learned so much the hard way <laughs> when it came to health and fitness. Like, oh. I took the long road for everything that now the teacher in me is like, I don't want anyone to ever have to learn the way I did. So let me just streamline this and make it as no brainer as possible. That's beautiful. And you really do like, we'll, we'll talk about it later in the episode and, and we'll put uh, in the description, all the links to everything, but those videos are just awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's right. I can do that. Yeah. Especially a lot of people are visual learners and, and to yeah. be able to see that so plain and simple, just yeah. kudos to you that's because a, it's awesome. It's a great way to start too. Like you were saying, just choose one of those videos, mm-hmm. like it and just do it. Just yeah. do that one, commit to it for whatever, one day a week, two days a week, just start there. I yeah. guess that's what helped us with our ab stuff. It was like, what yeah. are we, <laughs> we, we were like, yeah, we're making so much progress. Our core is still just like, <laughs> and it's like, well, oh yeah, we're not doing anything in that targeted area. Mm-hmm. But then realizing we hate it <laughs> to the point where it's, it was so out of our regimen. But once mm-hmm. we found a YouTube video, literally five minute abs, literally just Google to five minute abs came up mm-hmm. and just did that three days a week, four days a week, five days a week. And it was like, do we have five minutes? You have five minutes. This conversation is longer than five minutes. Right. So, right. And just, just, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yep. And this, I mean, this goes back to go back to our music conversation. One of the things when you're teaching young kids who are just starting, right? I used to always say to them, what do you think is better to practice two hours one day a week or 10 minutes, five days a week? Right. And it's a no brainer answer. It's the same thing with fitness. Like what most of us do is we go super hard want that one day, like this is day one of my journey. I'm going to go to the gym for two hours. <laughs> if we can't walk <laughs> for the next two weeks. Uh, right. We never go back. So it's the same thing as music, like go do a 15 minute workout like two days a week to get you going. And again, that momentum, your body's going to go, wow, I felt really good. What else? What else? What else? And next thing you know, it's six months later, you've completely formed new habits, changed your life. That's another, that could be another program for you right there. It's just like how to, <laughs> how to get more while doing less. It's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. that doesn't work. No, it actually does. Why would you go so hard for one day when you could just break it up into these rehearsals mm-hmm. or practice sessions or lifting weight sessions okay. to actually take it to the, that's all, yeah, <laughs> connecting dots over here. I love it. <laughs> that's so, great. I, I know you're going to like this one. So there are a lot of myths in the health and fitness world. And uh, I'd like to know if you have any favorite myths that you'd like to debunk for us here today. Oh, Lord, there are so many. (laughs) I formed a company off these myths. (laughs) Um, The biggest one, well, I'm not going to dive into this one because we've talked a lot about nutrition, but don't cut out carbs. I'm just going to make a blanket statement. Unless you you hate carbs, I've met people who are gluten intolerant. I've never met a human being who hates carbs. Unless you hate them, blanket statement, don't cut them out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, The biggest myth, that that hurts my heart because so many women especially not just women but especially women are so well intentioned and they're putting the time and they're putting the effort and they're not seeing results is because this idea of low weight high reps is complete and utter bs it is such a falsity and then you see people who are so dedicated and they're lifting weights every day and they're into their routine and they're not seeing results and the answer is that you're doing it wrong. (laughs) And that's not a knock to you. It's a knock to what's being sold. Mm. Right. And this becomes, I get heated about this one because it's such a marketing pain point. Like you guys know you you've worked in marketing where you know that one of the techniques you're taught is like touch into people's fears, right? Tap on their fears. Mm -hmm. 
So they know that women are afraid of getting bulky. It's a very common thing. I don't want, like, even I don't have huge muscles, but I have big enough muscles where a lot of women don't want to look like me. And that's, that's awesome. That's not for everyone, but we, they've associated lifting weights with getting bulky. So they've sold this idea. Mass marketing has sold this idea that the way to avoid getting bulky is to use low weight, high rep. And it is completely not true because the way muscle growth actually happens is when you're in the gym lifting weights, you're not building muscle right then. You're actually creating little tears in your muscle fibers. It's when you rest and you eat and you sleep and you recover that those muscle fibers heal and your muscles grow. So these women, especially who want like lean sculpted arms, you can't get that unless you actually create those muscle tears. And the only way to do that is by pushing your muscles to lift heavier than they currently can. So if you're lifting a little two pound weight, that's too light for you. And you're sitting here doing a hundred reps, like you might burn some calories, just the same way I'm burning calories doing this, mm -hmm. but you're not going to build muscle. And what we need to understand is that nutrition determines how your body shapes up. If you're going to build big bulging biceps, or if you're going to lose and get those lean sculpted muscles, that's all nutrition. But no matter what your goals are, you have to push yourself to lift heavier than you can. And that's so hard to get our heads around because it's so different than what we've been taught all these years. And that comes from marketing tapping into our pain points. Mm -hmm. And that, that's exactly it. It's all emotion driven. And if yeah. that's a hack for you guys, if you're looking at a marketing campaign of any sorts and you feel any sort of feelings, they probably got you. So <laughs> yeah. stop, stop right there. Stop right there. Turn it off. And I just got shift. a, uh, a memory of that uh the dog the dog uh in the eye. no <laughs> yeah. oh, that is the the mother yeah. of all commercials oh like, my gosh yeah talk about emotions yeah. right there uh, yeah. and it's so true what you're saying there's so many things that tie up with the emotional side of it or or the expectation or the the mass view on something that you try to you end up playing into that versus playing into what your actual goals are that's incredible oh yeah. And that's, I mean, that's all of the health and fitness industry. That's why I started this company because whether we're talking about carbs or point systems or shake systems, people believe, most people believe that the reason it's never worked is because they haven't found what works for them. And the reality is that nutrition and weight loss is math and science. It, barring some major medical condition, there is a hard, there are hard and fast rules that work for every human being. It's not a matter of your body type or your blood type or anything else. It's that you have not learned the skill of nutrition yet. And once you do it, hundred percent will work. It's not a guessing game of, I can't believe Rachel's program worked for me. Like this is not Rachel's program. This is me teaching you the laws of how the human body is designed. <laughs> and if you follow them, they work, <laughs> but that's, you know, that's not a great sales pitch for <laughs> an ad scrolling through <laughs> Instagram. But it's because, true. Right. <laughs> right. But it is truth with a capital T. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that because you cut through the BS and yeah, you, you, it's a beautiful thing because you have to really um, wade through the waters of, of, you know, people trying to just make a quick buck or um, this worked for me, but it's probably not the best thing to do, but you should try it because it worked for me. Like the whole, <laughs> the whole keto thing, really, I don't I know, I don't want to dive into the whole thing, but that just seems wrong to me yep. it's not sustainable right. and like, let's just think logically if like bacon is okay but bananas are the devil like does that seem okay before we talk about anything <laughs> right that? that's that's all you need to say but if yeah. everyone else is saying it and that guy's ripped and that right is, uh, yeah it's right. part of the marketing yeah. employee the yeah. atkins thing back in the day i remember mm -hmm. my mom was doing that and but, that, yeah. at that point yeah. if i could have a baconator every day that would there be you like, go. right I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> stay away from <laughs> apples because they'll, they'll get you <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm curious now because it, it's so uplifting just seeing your your mindset and your strength and how you've really, really set a whole new life for yourself from what, where you came from, what you studied all the way to where you are now. If you could go to back to the version of you that was really starting this company now, but still teaching, um, even didn't know you were gay yet, like well, that confused version of yourself where you were saying that you had a lot of uh, revelations during that time. What would advice would you give yourself? Like, if you could literally go in a time machine right now and talk to that version of yourself, what would you say? And like, what would you foreshadow for the future? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I remember when I was in that 
that period of time, I was going, in addition to lifting weights, I was going to yoga. It's the only time in my life I've ever done yoga consistently. And I loved it. I used to do hot yoga. And I remember standing outside the yoga class and I ran into a friend of mine who is now at the time she wasn't a life coach. Now she runs an amazing life coaching business. She is the best I've ever met. Her name's Tracy Litt. I'll shout her out. And I hadn't seen her in a long time. She didn't know what I was going through. And she made the mistake of very casually being like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> and like the floodgates opened. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how long have you gotten? Um, and she gave me a hug and she said, stop trying to figure it out. And I was mm. like, like, my brain does not comprehend that. Like, I, there's a mm. problem. I need to fix it. I'm very task oriented. And she was like, there's nothing for you to fix. Like, leave it. Just keep doing what feels good. And it will all settle down. And at the time I was like, I really appreciate that advice and I'm not going to take it at all because I, <laughs> I have to do this out right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's so true. Like th that's one of the biggest things I've learned as I go through this is that, I mean, with business, you, you have to figure things out. There's more of a logistical side to it, but it's this, this detachment of, I'm going to try this. I'm going to put my heart and soul into it. And I'm also going to know that if this doesn't go as planned, it's like you said before, we're sifting through, we're picking out the gold nuggets mm -hmm. and then I'm going to move on to the next thing. And I'm not going to let it be a hit to my ego. I'm not going to take it as a reflection on myself or my identity. It's just all information. I think that's the biggest takeaway I've learned is that everything is just information. Like, oh, you're gay. You never noticed it before. That's interesting. Like <laughs> wonder why <laughs> they took you so long to figure it out. Right. You did this big launch. It didn't go as according to plan. That's interesting. I wonder why. And it's just all information that has nothing to do with your self-worth, your ego, anything else. Or your happiness. That's what yeah. it or seems like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I love that. Yep. Beautiful. Totally. And that goes back to what we were talking in the beginning about, you know, it doesn't matter what you did in the past. It had to happen to get to where you are. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I could go back in time and say that to my past self. And it would have been the same answer I gave to Tracy. I've been like, that's cool. I'm not going to take that advice, mm -hmm. right? You have to live through the experience to be able to take that advice. So it's, it's all a journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed this episode with Rachel Fryman. Follow Rachel on Instagram at GetMindStrong to have access to all those awesome workout clips we mentioned during the episode. She has an amazing podcast named Becoming Mind Strong. So make sure to give that a listen. There's tons of valuable information in those episodes. Also, check out MindStrongFitnessCoaching.com to find her ebook, coaching services, and more. Follow the MBP podcast on Instagram at Mind Body and Pockets and subscribe to us on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Thanks again for the support, and as always, keep taking steps to level up your life. <laughs>